I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks, and today we're going to be making some cornhole boards. I actually bought the plywood for the top pre-cut at 2 foot by 4 foot, which is the size of a regulation cornhole board. First I needed to cut the boards I was going to use for the frame. I used 1x4 common boards from a local home store, and I cut enough for two sides, top, the bottom, and one brace in the center, the same size as the top and bottom pieces. Then I used the same stock to make the legs. These are cut at about 13 inches, but depending on how thick of plywood you're using for the top, this could vary to get an official 12 inch height at the top of the board when it's set up. For the angles on the legs, I measured up from the bottom corner about an inch and a half on one edge and then drew a line from that point to the opposite corner. Then I set the angle on my miter saw, in this case it was about 22 and a half degrees, and made the angle cuts on each of the legs. But I actually had to go back later and take a little bit more off at a steeper angle around 30 degrees to make them sit perfectly flush on the ground. The legs have to be rounded in order to fold. You can use several things to make this arch, such as a roll of tape, or in this case, a coffee mug. I took the legs over to the bandsaw to rough cut them, getting close to the line, but not right on it. You could also use a jigsaw for this step. Once I had all the legs rough cut, I could take them over to the sander and smooth everything out, and this is where I could sneak up on the line. I found the center of the board that hadn't been rounded over yet, marked two spots, and then used that as a reference when marking the hole location for the bolt that holds the legs on. The hole should be centered in the board and down from the top about one inch. I really only needed to measure and mark one because I could use that as a template for the rest of them. Then it was time to start drilling pocket holes in the frame. Make sure your jig and bit is set to the proper thickness of material that you're working with. I drilled two pocket holes in each end of all the cross braces. I also drilled pocket holes about every eight to 10 inches that would attach the frame to the top. I did this on all the pieces of the frame. Once all the holes were drilled, I could assemble the frame. I used screws along with some waterproof wood glue to secure it all together. Always make sure to clamp your piece so it doesn't shift on you while you're driving in the screws. While I'm assembling this, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell if you want to be notified when I drop new videos. I will also link all the tools and products I use in this video in the description below for you guys. I ran a bead of glue around the entire frame and then attached it to the top using pocket screws. Then it was time to mark where the hole was going to be. It needs to be 12 inches from the edge and 9 inches down from the top. The hole itself is a 6 inch hole and you can achieve this a couple different ways. My preferred way is a 6 inch hole saw, but you could also draw a circle with a compass and use a jigsaw to cut it out. I will say if you're using a hole saw, take your time and hang on to that drill. I use a mini round over bit on my router to clean up all the sharp edges, but you could achieve the same thing with some sandpaper. When mounting the legs, I cut a one inch piece of scrap to use as a spacer, then I butt the leg up against it and use it as a guide to drill through the frame. I just used regular three inch bolts on this set, 
but I've also used carriage bolts in the past and I say they probably work a little better and I'll probably use those from now on. After everything was assembled, I went around and sanded it all, flushing up all the joints and sanding everything up to 220 grit. I broke over all the edges with the mini roundover bit that I used earlier in the holes. Then I did a quick hand sanding just to make sure everything was nice and smooth. For this particular set, the client wanted a dark stain. I always apply my stain with a foam brush and then wipe it off with a clean t-shirt or similar material rag. It seems to work best without leaving a bunch of lint behind. Oh, and as you may have noticed, I took the legs back off just so I could get in all the spots that needed to be stained. Once the stain was dry, I applied four coats of water-based polyurethane to everything, lightly sanding between coats. This gave it a super smooth finish and it allowed the bags to slide very easily. Thank you guys for watching. That's how I make cornhole boards. This is a pretty simple set, but you can pretty much customize it to however you'd like. I've seen people do their name, team logos, crazy colors, all kinds of stuff. It's really a simple DIY project that you can do with just a few simple tools and have some fun this summer. So if you guys did like the video, please comment below. Let me know what you thought of it. Like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when I drop new videos and I'll see you guys on the next one.